Here's um, some information, some current information about what's happening with the US, and this ties in with uh, with my disdain for uh, for what's happening with uh, the Liberal Party policies regarding globalism, which. Uh, uh, Scott Morrison basically hasn't moved an inch on those particular crucial policies since he's become Prime Minister. So I'll just read this and then we'll just contrast what's happening in the US with what's not happening in Australia. Uh, the US argues that the United Nations Pact is inconsistent with its policies, adding that decisions on domestic immigration should be made by Americans and Americans at uh, alone. And this is regarding the the, uh, the UN Compact on Immigration, which basically uh, ties uh, individual countries like America to UN policies, and they're not having a bar of it, and I totally agree with them. The administration of Pre uh, President Donald Trump has withdrawn the United States from the United Nations Pact to improve the handling of migrant and refugee situations, deeming it inconsistent with its policies. The US mission to the global body announced Saturday. Today, the U.S. mission to the United Nations informed the U.N. Secretary General that the United States is ending its participation in the Global Compact on Migration, the Americans said in a statement. In September 2016, the 193 members of the U.N. General Assembly unanimously adopted a non-binding political declaration, the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants, pledging to uphold the rights of refugees help them resettle and ensure that they have access to education and jobs. Boy, if that isn't a lot of virtue signaling from 193 members, I don't know what is. Uh, but you've got to remember, out of those 193 uh, members, there's a lot of corrupt tin pot uh, countries that, uh, that are totally undemocratic and they are trying to tell the democracies such as the United States uh, how to run their, their countries, and uh, um, that's why I think the US is totally right getting, getting away from it, um, and Australia should take heed. The New York Declaration contains numerous provisions that are inconsistent with US immigration and refugee policies and the Trump administration's immigration principles. As a result, President Trump determined that the United States would end its participation in the compact process that aims to reach international consensus at the UN in 2018, the US statement said. Uh, US Ambassador Nikki Haley said the country would continue its generosity in supporting migrants and refugees around the world, but that our decisions on immigration policies must always be made by Americans and Americans alone. Bravo! We will decide how to best control our borders and who will be allowed to enter our country. The global approach in the New York Declaration is simply not compatible with US sovereignty. Again, bravo. That's exactly how we should be doing things in Australia. We have sovereignty. Well, we've got some left uh, and we need to hold on to what little we have. Uh, under Trump and his America First policies, the United States has withdrawn from several global commitments made under the administration of President Barack Obama, including the Paris Climate Deal. More recently, America, America pulled out of the Paris-based culture and education policy uh, body UNESCO, accusing it of anti-Israel bias. And that would be right because there are so many um, uh, pro-Arabic um, uh, and Islamic uh, countries that are obviously on these committees and, and what have you that would basically stack them way against uh, the interests of, of, uh, of democratic countries in the world. And, uh, you know, we shouldn't be copying it. As a matter of fact, I just think the, the UN's totally useless, to be honest. And, and I, uh, my understanding was that the US was one of the biggest backers financially. I, I think they should just pull funding altogether and get them out of New York and just uh, they can set up in bloody some some crap hole in some place like Nigeria for all I care but uh, they don't they, they don't deserve the status that they've got and I think it's dwindling anyway but getting back to how this affects us in Australia they like Scott Morrison you think that uh, like I said Alan Jones you think uh, Scott that the sun shines out of Scott Morrison's ass the way he's talking about him talk about uh, pumping the guy up well, I beg to differ. Scott Morrison, on these, these crucial major issues, such as immigration, such as the, uh, the Paris Agreement on climate change, has done absolutely nothing. As I said, he's basically the shadow of, um, of Malcolm Turnbull, who would be one of the most useless 
leaders we've had in, in, in decades. And mind you, I thought Barack Obama was pretty damn useless as well. Uh, but I would think that um, the Turbles would, would actually would would actually trump him as far as that's concerned. Pardon the pun. Uh, nothing to do with the Donald, I might add. But uh, yeah, seriously, I just the, the, our our politicians are pathetic. I just wish we had some with more balls. Having our um, uh, inquisition that took place recently uh, for the Supreme Court uh, position in the U.S. There, there was at least one uh, politician who uh, who he had the balls to say what he really thought and had a go at at, 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 at this witch hunt. And I thought that was great, and we should have more of that uh, both there and in, back here in Australia. We need politicians who are prepared to to say it like it is. Uh, most of them are just gutless wonders that would just into in group think. And, um, and that is including the Liberal Party. Uh, as I say, some of those women who basically uh, spat the dummy and left uh, the party, I think, great. And those MPs, who, who would want them? So that's all good, but that's my little overview of, of international relations. Quite positive moves at the moment because the nationalism uh, wave is moving right across and hopefully will even affect the UK. Uh, the likes of UKIP might actually have a show. Um, and I think Macron's pretty pathetic and on the nose in, in France, so there's, there's hope there as well. Uh, but I think that Germany will be the first domino to fall, of the big, really big uh, countries to fall. Italy was a real surprise packet. Uh, we didn't expect that. Uh, that's put a mo lot more pressure on the likes of Merkel. Uh, but I think the globalists are in retreat right now, and I think it's a good thing because uh, I believe we need to uphold our cultures in all, all, our, all the independent countries in the world. The IPCC, this is the Achilles heel for, I guess, all many governments in the Western world at the moment, are now making another report on climate change. Uh, you've disposed of this so-called national energy guarantee. You've turned energy debate from renewable to reliable. Um, shouldn't we be seeking a simple national energy policy which makes us independent because we're resource rich? And shouldn't the policy be about availability, reliability, affordability, national security, economic growth, certainly rational conservation, mm. and investor confidence. Now, well, yes. how do you get that by being a signatory to Paris? Well, it, it doesn't change any of that because we meet it all in a canter. So I can, I can ask the, this question. If and that's this, so, then rip, rip, rip up Paris. No, no, this, this is what, what is to be gained from ripping it up? Well, because you're being held to the conclusions that will be released no, we in the next 24 no, hours we won't by be at all, all those who are signatories to this. No, we, we're not held to any of them at all, Alan, and, and nor are we bound to go and tip money into that big climate fund. We're not going to do that either. So I'm not going to spend money on you know global climate conferences and all that sort of nonsense. I'm not going to... Get in there. But if that's and, the case, why don't you just say we're out of it? Because, Alan, um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, when Australia signs up to something, and it wasn't the previous Labor government who signed up to this, it wasn't the previous Labor government that committed us to a 26% target, that was actually our government that did that. And I was part of that government, and when Australia puts its word to something, it means something. The second is, as I've said on your program before, that this is an enormously important issue to our partners in the Pacific, who are strategic partners in the Pacific. So my question is, what's to be gained from ripping it up? I don't think there's much to be gained from ripping it up. I mean, it's not going to affect electricity prices. Angus Taylor has already told you that, and I, that's my view as well. So long as we're not throwing, you know, money into some global climate fund and, and getting, you know, um, you know, pulled around by the nose by all these international agencies when it comes to these other reports. I mean, the same report that's coming out today said a year ago the policies were fine, but, you know, we're, we're investing in the, in, in the reef to ensure that's secure. Um, we're taking the practical action that you need to take. But we don't get we don't get led around by the nose but by these the organisations. Pacific, you mentioned the Pacific. The Pacific are rent seekers. These outfits are saying are to that, you, to you and Maurice Payne, well, the global climate climate change is going to mean that we'll disappear, we'll be washed away, and we need your money. Now Donald Trump pulled out of the Paris yeah, Agreement and yeah. he said Obama it, signed it, yeah, signed up, not he, not Trump. It, no, and he said it had cost two point seven million jobs, it had cost four hundred and forty thousand manufacturing. He said the economic burden would close to be three trillion in GDP. Is there a document somewhere which will tell us, Australian taxpayers, what our signatory to Paris is going to cost Australia? Well my understanding of it right now, at twenty six percent 
It's not going to touch electricity prices, and it's not going to touch one job. Well, we've got a story at the weekend, a headline story in the Australian, which says in the summer electricity prices are going to go up. Yeah, but that's this not because of Paris. Point. No, 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 but I'm just saying it's linked to Paris. If we had, if you committed, how committed are you to cheap energy? For example, uranium. It's, would you overturn the illegality of building a nuclear reactor in Australia? Well, if, if I thought that this was going to have a big impact on Australia's electricity clean. prices, I'll, I'll do what is cheap necessary to bring electricity prices down. So I don't have any issues so about any of these. No, I'm not. Of course I'm not. Um, the, the issues there are the same it, the issues everywhere in, that the investment doesn't stack up. And you've got to make the investment stack up. For the, I mean, I was down in Tasmania last week, and I was down there at the Battery of the Nation project. Now, this is exciting. 2,500 megawatts of hydro currently built between 1910 and, and the early 1990s in Tasmania. Basically, one of the biggest engineering projects Australia has ever seen over that period of time. Will Hodgman has a plan to double that capacity put an interconnector between Tasmania and the mainland, and that will double what uh, Tasmania does uh, in terms of reliable fair income power coming into the, to, the, to the energy markets on the east coast of Australia. Now, that's another great project, and I've talked about how excited I am about that project. The interconnector, there's the pumped hydro assets that go right across Tasmania. I mean, that is the Tasmania is the capital of hydro in Australia, mm-hmm. and it can be the nation's battery. But see, so you've got an election coming up early next year. There's a story... In the Weekend Australia on page 9, it said, Soaring summer power bills predicted that electricity prices on the East Coast and in the southern states will spike. Now, are they going to blame you for this? Well, they can't blame 26% because we meet that in a canter. That's my point. But you're guaranteeing lower prices, and they're saying they won't be lower. The ACCC forecasts that gas prices will add $15 a gigajoule over summer. That's four times. Yeah, I know, and it'd be great to get more gas out of the ground. why don't you have a gas... No, why not have a gas reservation policy and stop exporting all this stuff? effectively do, Alan. No, but you don't have effectively. It's not mandatory. It's not a statutory requirement. If if we believe the gas is not going to be delivered in the quantums that is required in Australia, then we have a policy to prevent that. I mean, that's what got the gas availability for this year and for next year. Um, And we need more gas from under our feet. There's no doubt about that. Um, We've got in Victoria, we have a state government that has a ban on conventional gas exploration. Yeah, but we've got, it's enough, crazy. we've got enough gas to last us the next 174 yeah. years. And we need we more ex- of it. But no, we export the stuff. We're exporting the stuff. Canada says let's have a gas reservation policy. I've used the analogy on this program before, Prime yeah. Minister. You know, we're on a dairy farm. Every yeah. day, my old man would say, how much milk does your mother want? Yeah. And we'd keep that for ourselves yeah. to be used. Cheap for nothing, because we milked it. But we, Why we, don't we, we do that with our own we, gas? But we do, Alan. We have that policy now. We actually have that policy where we can ban those exports where the gas is not staying in Australia. That's already been that's already been made of given effect to. I, but what I'd like to see is revenue sharing with farmers to get access to gas. I think that'd be a great idea. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if they think there's anything there of uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give do that or give me a thumbs up or or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.